Right, so I want to talk about this paper that I've just had accepted um, called Understanding Printed Hexagonal Contacts for Large Area Soil Cells Through Simulation Experiment. Um, and this paper <coughs> originated uh, sort of before COVID in 2019 and uh, I met uh, a person called Arved, a very nice guy called Arved and a very nice lady called Silen um, at the Technical University of Chemnitz and we were effectively chatting over coffee and biscuits and um, <coughs> we thought well let's try and do some work together. And um, what Arvid and Silen do is they uh, print very, very large area solar cells. So most test devices that uh, people are interested in are small areas that are about under a centimetre. Um, so it's things we, you know, and that's quite big for a lab cell. So generally when people go and model these type of devices, they use drift fusion models to really understand the detailed physics of what's going on inside, which is what GPDM has been doing, in fact, up to now, there's GPDM. Um, and uh, that's all well and good, but in the real world we want to upscale, you know, we don't want solar cells that are about a centimetre, we want them that are sort of, you know, maybe a metre or you know, at least say 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres. So the game is to go from the lab scale to the, uh, to the larger scale. Um, and this is what Selen and Arvid do, and they um, have this rather cool um, printing uh, machine. So here's, here's their printing machine. And this is a big, big roll-to-roll -roll printing machine that's got a very, very complicated, expensive thing. And what they can do is they can print solar cells effectively. So they can print these are uh, so these are, these are contacts to the solar cells. So this is some silver um, that's been deposited deposited uh, to make a, a hexagonal uh, grid structure would form a contact. And then on top of this, you could deposit your solar cell. And these are very very long. Um, potentially these could be sort of up to a kilometer long. And this is sort of maybe five centimeters wide, maybe you know nineteen centimeters long, some, something like that. In this, so that's probably nineteen centimeters. That's probably about five centimeters. And this thing's probably about a kilometre long. So, um, talking about very, very large area devices. So we thought, well, you know, maybe I could have a go modelling this. So, um, I did. And what came out of this is effectively this paper. And um, you can read, go and read about the results in this paper and, and things like that. But I'll just show you sort of a little preview of, of some of the simulation results. Uh, let me just find. I don't want to show you the whole paper because that might breach some copyright thing. So, there's the. Um, there's the a nice figure from the paper. So effectively what we did is we got their hexagonal contacts. So there's the hexagonal contact. Um, we discretized in 3D and made these sort of resistive network models, literally like resistors you do a circuit diagram in school, but in 3D, and then tried to use this to try and model um, the cell. So I'm going to run through some of this today and hopefully you'll be able to do this yourself um, if you want to um, after watching the video. So. Um, I made a default simulation here uh, for GPDM. Now this is sort of an approximate device um, that's sort of relatively realistic. So it's got, uh, it's not exactly the same as one on the paper, but it's very similar. So it's got this hexagonal contact here, um, which you, you can see on their printed thing there. So you've got, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, three wide. So sort of that section of it effectively. Um, currents extracted here, this contact, and at the bottom here. Uh, and uh, what we can do effectively is we can assign a resistance or resistivity to each layer. So here's the electrical parameter window. And notice that if you've been using GPM before, uh, the all sort of the detailed drift diffusion uh, parameters aren't shown because you're in um, circuit mode. So you're in simple circuit solver mode. So all those things are hidden. So we've got some, a resistance or resistivity um, effectively um, modeling this 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 area this. This uh, sort of hexagonal thing. We've got one um, uh, representing the p dot. We've got one representing the PMY6. Um, so, what we can do first, what we firstly want to do is generate a circuit diagram that effectively is a good approximation to this device. So, what we do is we click on circuit diagram, we click effective refresh. Um, and what this will do is it'll build the circuit diagram for you. And um, it's a little bit computationally heavy to build, as you can see, a sort of chugging away. Uh, that's why you have to click the refresh button to um, to make it go. So it'll pop up in a sec. There we go. Now build our circuit diagram and we can look at it and you can see that we've actually got little cool resistor networks. So there's our little you know resistors. These are all, all resistors um, representing this, uh, this structure. And below obviously in, in the PMY6 layer that's actually diodes. Um, although I don't draw the diodes I just draw up as lines showing the links. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and we can run a JV curve on that. So if we just go, oh, let's run it in the in the light. Let's put some light on the scene. So hang on, optical and go 
uh, light intensity one sun. Um, so now let's run it. So this is slightly computationally heavy because you imagine this is like a non-linear problem and obviously we're solving the optical electrical problem. So it's chugging away, it's actually solving the, the optical problem, not just sort of in one place in the device, but actually all over the device. So it's going to be taking into account of shading that this is, this is going to be, this structure is going to be giving it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so almost up to you know, infrared now, 1.2 microns. And then what it's going to do once it's solved the optical problem is start solving the electrical problem. There we go. So, there we go. Um, it's chugging away, solving it. So, you know, 0.8. What, what, you know, a few volts, whatever, 0.2 volts, and here's, here's the progress up here. Looking good. I'm not sure how many equations it's solving, it's probably a few, few thousand, you know, a few thousand nodes. And you can, by the way, you can also increase the detail of, of the simulation mesh by, of course, editing the mesh um, as usual. And so we've got 30 mesh points by 30. I've just chosen that because it seems to be a nice number to, uh, but uh, you, you can increase that or decrease depending on how complex your pattern is here. So I think it's just like each, there we go. Right, okay, so it's finished. So now we can look at the JV curve. And we've got a JV curve, oops, a daisy, we did do. We've got a JV curve of um, this little structure that we're simulating. Uh, so that all looks perfectly sensible. So that's it, really. Into, oh, no, it's not actually it. There's a bit more. So one question you might ask, I'll just turn off these photons so we can see what's going on. One question you might ask, I think it's not really drawn it. But anyway, one question you might ask is how do we get this sort of hexagonal structure on top? Well, this is actually in the shape database. So if you right click on that and go um, edit, and it's, it says it honeycomb, so shape type honeycomb three by three. And we can, ch we can change this to whatever we want. Um, I've got another honeycomb in there, so let's just select the other honeycomb. And it's change the type of honeycomb that we've got there. Um, we can change it to, to other shapes in this database, Gaussian. I mean, that's not going to be very good contact, obviously, Gaussian contact. You can see it's a lump, because it's not actually making contact with the contact there. So that's probably not a good one to choose. Um, the other ones, uh, what else do we have? You just have a box, if you want a box. It goes back to just being a standard, but obviously, that obviously wouldn't work very well, because you've got a gold layer here. Um, so, yeah, um, and I think, I might just go through editing these now. Yeah, so um, these are all kept in the database, which is the shape database, um, and you can make your own shape. So if we copy this honeycomb, so let's um, rename, let's copy this, and we'll call it uh, play, we'll call it play, because we're just playing with it. So there we've got play. Now let's edit this. And what we get up is we get, that's the, the, two, the 2D structure on the right, and on the left is, um, is it, its 3D discretized form. So what we can uh, do is we can edit this honeycomb. So maybe we, we you know, uh, what do we want to do? So let's edit the honeycomb. Um, let's, uh, I don't know, let's halve, its, halve, halve the size, say, by one, on one axis. And then if we click there, we regenerate it and we've slightly changed it. We can put some boundaries on it, so let's put some uh, boundaries on it. So let's, and these could be sort of contacts or, or whatever, let's sort of, I don't know, let's have a 10 pixel boundary around each edge, apply, uh, and then regenerate it. We've now got a bit of a border to it. Um, and you can really play to your heart's content. You can also import images into here, so you can go load new image and, uh, and uh, I actually import it. And what, if you, what you want to do, in fact, what we'll do is we'll go for some, no, we'll, we'll continue this actually. Now, what, what you want to do once you've done this is obviously this, this 3D shape is not updated, so you want to rebuild this mesh, so you just click build mesh. And what it will do is it'll put a triangular mesh over this and try and optimize um, the triangles to make them the least number of triangles that can, uh, can represent this shape. So that's what it's doing now. So it starts off with about 3,000 triangles and it's trying to remove, remove as many as possible.
it'll update once it's uh, done that. It's refreshing because it's a bit slow because it's all, this is all Python. So it's still working, so it's best not, there we go. So that's that updated. And so this is updated now and you can see that this shape here is now updated. So we've got our weird borders around the edge that we, that we popped, pop, popped on. We've got these sort of holes in the center of the device. Um, yeah, and this is just a demo structure. You put any structure in here you want. Um, so let's just change this again, just, just for the sake of it. Um, let's uh, make it a bit bigger this time. And also we're going to take this border off, because it looks a bit silly. Uh, regenerate it. Now, what we can do also is we can, cha whoops, we can change how this mesh is built. So um, we can have the two options to build the mesh. You've got node reduce or, or no reduce. So if we click no reduce and generate the mesh, it's just refreshing. I think there's a lot of triangles in this one. I think that's the that's the issue. There we go. So that this is with no reduction in the number of triangles. So you can see basically there's a triangles put in a square across the whole thing. The computational times on this will be very, very slow when you try to run a simulation because there's like loads of triangles to deal with. And you see even on this 3D thing that I'm trying to drag around, it's taking absolute age to, to move it. So this is very, very detailed, but it's not really uh, what you want uh, to, to have for a, a computation. Oh yeah, there we go. So, yeah, it's very, very detailed, but um, probably not what you want. So let's just go back to node reduce, rerun this, and just reduce those triangles out. There we go. So it starts off with about 10,000 triangles. It usually takes about three passes to... Uh... So now it's only removed 52 triangles. There we go. So update. So that's that's the mesh it's generated, and this is the the reduced triangular mesh. There we go. So what we now do is we can import that into our shape. So we can go. Well, we, I think we called it play, didn't we? So call it play. Close that. And now we can import that and then just run a simulation, you know, update the circuit diagram, you know, what whatever. So now effectively you can you know, simulate large area devices without too much of a problem. So yeah, if you want to, if you, oops, it crashed. <laughs> that's not surprising, is it? Um, yeah. So um, I think that's really it. Um, I'll end it on that on that note of it of it uh, conking out. So if you if you want to. Um, uh, read about it, you can read about it here. Um, it's all a bit new code, so if you, um, I wrote mainly of the pandemic, so um, if, if you would like to write papers together or, or, or apply, for, apply for grants or whatever to, to do things together in this direction, just drop me a mail and I'd be very, very happy to, uh, you know, to uh, get in contact and discuss papers or whatever in that direction. So thanks very much, um, goodbye.